From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Andrew Court. Johnny, how'd you like to go to San Francisco? What's up, Andy? Well, we've written a lot of insurance for an independent contractor out there, a man named Arnold Bennett. Uh Uh-huh. Last night, his latest project went up in smoke. An office building he completed a month ago. How much is the policy worth? There were five companies involved. They took it on at $100,000 apiece and turned it over to us. Half a million bucks? Yep. I talked with the arson inspector for National Fire Underwriters in San Francisco. He said the fire looked phony. I'll pack my things. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Four State Fire Insurance Corporation, 4065 Spear Boulevard, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Bennett matter. Expense account item one, $15, flowers for my girl. I wasn't able to keep our date. Instead, I met Four State Fire Investigator Andrew Cord at his office, and we made immediate arrangements to fly to California. Item two, $25.06, one raincoat. Item three, $144.15. Air transportation, Hartford, New York, San Francisco. Our route, Andrew Cord, fill me in on the details concerning Arnold Bennett. Oh, Johnny, as things stand now, Bennett hasn't filed a claim yet, although I imagine that'll be coming through pretty fast if I know him. I met him once when he was in New York getting money to finance one of his big subdivisions. Yeah, it seems I've heard of him. Oh, he's made time and life... A couple of times each. Oh, yeah. When I met him, I said to myself, Andy, look well on this man. He may be the last of his kind. Oh, how's that? Well, Arnold Bennett must be past 60 now. He's been everything in his lifetime. Sailor, soldier, lawyer, financier, bootlegger, gun runner, Lord knows what all. Talked fast, worked hard, and what he couldn't get one way, he got another. All in all, he's done pretty well. It shows all over him. I didn't like him, Johnny. Well, go on, go on. Well, maybe I was just jealous of his aggressiveness, or maybe it's that I've just heard stories of how he ran roughshod over big and little. Well, uh, about this new building, Bennett's, it burned down. Yeah, yeah. Well, the man in San Francisco is pretty sure the fire was of incendiary origin. Well, can he prove it? Well, that'll be up to him and you and me. Four state and national fire underwriters are going to handle the investigation. Federal, Great Atlantic, and Tri-State underwriters aren't going to send any men at all. They figure it's best not to clutter things up. But proving the fire was incendiary may not be too easy, Andy. Well, we'll see when we get there. There's a standoff motive in the whole thing. We can start with that. What's that? Bennett's in financial trouble, big trouble, taxes, so on. The fire was an out. I see. Well, who's the arson man in San Francisco? Billy Underwood. Oh, good, good. Bill Underwood's one of the best arson men in the business. Well, it's going to take all of us to get Bennett, Johnny. Now, we'll split it three ways. We'll let Underwood handle the fire evidence. You can play front for us with Bennett, and I'll comb around in the financial situation. Yeah, well, we sure got our work cut out for us. But listen, Andy, you sound sort of scared of this guy, Bennett. I am, kind of. Why? Nobody's ever beat him. Expense account item four, seven dollars and a half. Incidentals upon arrival in San Francisco. Andy Cord and I checked in at the Fairmount, then went downstairs, rented a car, and drove out to the scene of the fire. Bill Underwood was already there, had been there all day. We all shook hands, and then Underwood broke it down. Bill was a bit of a pedant, had things pretty well organized for us. Now it's this way. A watchman on duty saw a man loitering in the vicinity of the building when he came to work at six o'clock. Uh-huh. Three other witnesses remember the same man. A druggist, a filling station attendant on his way home from work, and a newsboy. Got a description? Mm-hmm. I did. Male, Caucasian, 25 to 30, medium build, approximately 170. Dark hair, dark complexion. That's it. Have you talked to the police yet? Haven't had a chance, Billy. You know they got eight men on this? 
Well, with that much of a description, it might make it easier. I sure hope so. So far, the description hasn't fitted anyone in the files yet. The newsboy swears that he saw this man sneak around the side of the building about 6 o'clock. The fire broke out about 6.30. Anybody see him leave? Mm Mm-hmm. The newsboy says he saw him catch a bus on the corner right before the fire broke out. Might help us. But the bus driver on the line wasn't any help. He's pretty busy that time of night. Have you had a chance to go over this yet? Well, we started. I'm working with a fire inspector on it. And as soon as we come across anything, I'll let you know. We can't overlook any possibility on this, Billy. Any. Yeah. I know about Bennett. He's been out here asking me who I am, what I'm doing. He doesn't like it. Oh, he doesn't? Yeah. He learned to swear somewhere along the line. Oh, has he filed claim yet? No, we haven't heard. It's a professional firing job, I'm sure of it. You're sure? Well, I I haven't got what I need in the way of concrete evidence yet, but I'll find it somewhere in these ashes. The place burnt too well and too fast to be anything but professional. It was drafted. The fire got hot and going before anybody even spotted it. Well, this is a little out of my league, Billy. Tell me more, will you? Well, you see, an amateur will mess it up generally. It'll smoke a lot and somebody will spot it. Now, a bug, you know, a nut, he'll do as good a job as a professional. Oh. But, but he'll stick around and, and, and watch it burn, stand a good chance of getting caught. He might even call up somebody and tell him how happy he is. But uh, this bird... The one the newsboy saw getting out of here fast. Well, he sounds like he knows his business. Mm Mm-hmm. It's business with him. Then it'll be my job to connect him and Bennett somehow. And that's the tough part. Yeah. All I got to do is play around in the ashes. Oh, um, Johnny. Yeah? Watch a step with Bennett. Sure. He doesn't care about anybody. I spent another two hours with Court and Underwood covering the ruins of the ten-story office building that had been gutted the day before. Underwood acquainted Court and me with all of the necessary details, all he could. That night, we sat with the three witnesses at a special show up in the Hall of Justice. Sixty-odd suspects were paraded out. There were no identifications. The next morning, while Court and Underwood carried on with their part of the investigation, I went out to Arnold Bennett's real estate office near the Presidio. Remember that old saw, how a woman in love is always beautiful? When I walked in, I had no idea Elizabeth Bennett was in love and no idea that she was beautiful. Her sallow face without makeup, framed in a wisp of stringy blonde hair, wasn't flattered by the shapeless black dress and low-heeled shoes she was wearing. Certainly not the going idea of beauty. Now, did her conversation reveal anything to indicate love? Yes, sir. May I help you? Mr. Bennett, please. My name's Dollar. Dollar? D-O-L-L-A-R. He's not expecting me. Your business, Mr. Dollar. Four State Fire Insurance Corporation. It's about the fire that destroyed the office building. Oh, yes. Just a moment, please. Well, what is it, Liz? Uh, Mr. Dollar is here, Uncle Arnold. I don't want to see anybody today. I told you that, you idiot. Mr. Dollar's from Four State. It's about the fire. Oh. Well, send him in. And go out to lunch. Yes, sir. It's all right, Mr. Dollar. Straight ahead. He always liked that? He's nice today. (laughs) Thanks, Elizabeth. Hmm? That's your name, isn't it? Yes. I'm Elizabeth Bennett. Go straight ahead. Dollar? That's right. Mr. Bennett? Come in. Come in. I'm not going to ask you to sit down. I know why you're here. You have insurance investigator written all over your face. Well, in that case, we can get right down to the business at hand. What caused the fire? They don't know yet. It was deliberate. What? Somebody started that fire, that's what. And I know who. Get him and you'll save yourself some work. Tony Midas. Tony Midas? Who's that? The crackpot that set fire to my building. He's out of prison now and he swore he'd get me. Well, now look, maybe you'd better tell me just who he is and why he'd want to get you. Tony Midas worked for me once. I caught him stealing money and I prosecuted him. He was sent to prison for five years. And he's the one you want. You seem pretty certain of that. Of course I'm certain of it. I know what enemies I have, what friends... Don't tell me I'm going to have to pussy it around with someone like you and get any place in this whole affair. Well, there are some witnesses who got a look at the man who started the fire, or at least it's a good bet he's the one we're after. So tell me, what does this Tony Midas look like? I don't remember. I hardly ever remember faces. But you remembered his threat. 
You bet your last nickel I remember his threat. And he's the kind of screwy punk to carry it out. Last week, there was a small story in the newspaper that he was being released from prison. Well, then we'll certainly look him up and have a talk with him. That's very good of you, I'm sure. Oh, now, look, this can be a very difficult thing all the way around, or we can all cooperate, Mr. Bennett. I'll cooperate. I know why you're in town. I know who you came with. I met that glorified fire inspector yesterday. Underwood, you people don't fool me, and I'm not trying to fool you. Get Tony Midas, and you've got your man. Did you tell the police about Midas? No, I was waiting for some bird like you to walk in here with your high-handed attitude. Now I've told you, now you can get out and get busy looking for him. Arnold Bennett lived up to all of his advance notices, and then some. I'm paid very well to stand and take what I have to to find out what I want to find out. Sometimes it's not enough money. A review of the trial and proceedings in which Tony Midas had been convicted of grand theft, his threats at the time of his trial substantiated Bennett's information. That didn't surprise me. What did surprise me was that one of the three witnesses identified Tony Midas' mug picture as the man seen in the vicinity of the building the night of the fire. An APB went out for Midas. The San Francisco police began to turn the town upside down looking for him. By five o'clock in the afternoon, the other two witnesses had made up their minds that he was the man they had seen after all. The case against Midas became stronger. It was imperative that he be located. Johnny Dollar. This is Elizabeth Bennett, Mr. Dollar. Remember in my uncle's office? I remember. Mr. Dollar, you're looking for Tony Midas, aren't you? You don't have to answer. I know you are. I think I can help you find him, but he's not the one you're looking for. Look, if you turn him in... Let me finish, and then we'll talk about him. I live at 1038 Mirada Drive. I'll be home in an hour. We can talk there. Two minutes later, when I was putting on my coat, I received another phone call. This one from Bennett's lawyer. He advised me that Arnold Bennett had filed claim and would bring suit if his claim was not honored in the prescribed length of time. I thanked him for the information and went downstairs and began to look around for a cab. A police car careened into the driveway and a familiar hat on top of a familiar head leaned out. Hey, Johnny! Go! Yeah, Andy Cord. Hasta la vista, no? Hop in. Okay. It's Inspector Truck and Inspector Cage. Hi. What's up? Somebody shot Arnold Bennett ten minutes ago. Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the trail gets so rough, a couple of people just fall off dead. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson... It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.